What's going on guys? Magician Jso here, and today I'm going to be doing a box review for the Christmas Crusher box that just came out. The first card we're going to be looking at is the legendary power combo card in the box, Christmas Punch-Out. Now the Christmas Punch-Out card isn't half bad, it has 16 base attack and 48 health. And its skills has 8 hijacked and 12 punch, as well as 14 leech. Now the one thing that's really good about this card is with the current battleground effect for fighter going on where all fighter cards get a 30% buff of their base attack for punch and a 20% buff of their base health for heal. So what that means for the Christmas punch out card is it gains an additional 5 punch as well as 10 heal. So that um, 12 punch that it has will go up to 17 and it'll be healed by 10 each turn on top of its 14 leech. That um, buff that that's getting for the fighter bonus is great for this card offensively. This card will be self-healing and doing a lot of damage. The one downside to this card that I don't really like about it is its HP. While 48 HP isn't insanely low, it's not exactly high either. Outside of the fighter BGE, I don't see it being very useful as it can be taken out in one shot by a lot of cards and combos that have high punch and high attack. That being said, I do see this card having some fair use in Siege Islands for either maybe a Fighter Island or a Bob's Burger Island. The second card we're going to be looking at is the first item in this box, which is the Diamond Crusher card. Now, I love this card with this box, because this is a great utility item. It has 11 base attack and 51 base HP, which makes this a great utility card that can be run either offensively or defensively. You can run it in both types of decks. It's just great. Skill-wise, it has some pretty decent skills, too. The 9 boost isn't half bad to just boost its attack up by 9 every time you combo another card. So you can easily boost this card's attack up to 20 on the second turn if you want to just leave it alone and make a combo on something else. The 10 jab is also great to run offensively against any of your opponents that might be running characters or cards that have a wall skill up. You'll be um, jabbing right through that as well as any shields they might be getting from heroes like Jean or Ricky Spanish or the like. And then the 7 Bomb is just great and all. You can run that either offensively to take out some annoying adjacent cards, or even defensively to cause extra damage that it'll be a lot tougher for your opponents to heal up on. Now for the Diamond Crusher card, with the current Battleground effect, it'll be gaining 3 Punch as well as 10 Heal each turn. It also has some alright potential for combos. Let's take a look at the combos here. So the first card that Diamond Crusher combos with is Peter to make chicken fight. If you look at the chicken fight card, it has motivate, punch, and bomb, which makes this a phenomenal offensive um, combo to run in an offensive deck for Rumble. Next up is the combo with Mythic Stand to make mascot fighter stand. With bite back, punch, and hijack, it makes it a great defensive card to run if you want to cause some major damage to your opponents in Rumble. Next up is Roger to make Sensei Ryan, with Motivate, Boost, and Cheer All, Sensei Ryan can be run either offensively or defensively to some success. After that, we have Mythic Luis, which makes her combo with Punch and Leech. That can be used either offensively or defensively as well. The Punch-Leech combo defensively will be causing major, major damage and just be annoying in general to deal with, while the Punch-Leech offensively will be doing major damage and keeping your card's health up so you can get higher scores in Rumble matches. It also combos with Mythic Bob to give you the Christmas Punch-Out card, which is the, if you remember, is the pre-combo from this pack. The, this one will have the same skill as your Hijack, Punch, and Leech, so that can be run, again, either defensively or offensively to do massive damage. It also combos with Tina to give you Sexy Dance Fighting, which has Wall, Shield All and Punch. The Shield All, I believe, is either to Bob's Burgers. I might be mistaken on that, but I believe it's a Shield All to Bob's Burgers cards only, which is kind of a drawback to that. However, the Wall and the Punch are great if you want to run that defense, not defensively, offensively. Never run a Tina in your defense deck. That is a bad call. Next up is going to be Bobby with the Diamond Crusher. Bobby, to make Jealous Bobby, looks pretty awesome, to be honest has crazed punch and jab 
that can be run offensively or defensively because Bobby by itself has bite back. So in a defense deck, he's not terrible to run as the character. It's not too much risk. However, this combo with that punch, that craze, and that jab are great. That can be run either offensive or defensively. Next up, we have Hank Hill with the Diamond Crusher for Stick and Hank. Personally, I think this is the best new combo they came out with for this current um, new fighter pack. The combo for the Stick and Hank has 17 um, bite back, has heal all, and it has a wall. So this card is just great. It'll be doing massive damage defensively, and then offensively, that heal all is just fantastic to keep all of your cards just at optimal health. Then we have the Mythic Leela combo to give you the new action delivery force com combo. Freaking fantastic. Has hijacked, craze, and it has cheer. I believe the cheer is going to um, going to fellow fighter cards. I might be mistaken on that because Cartoon Battles doesn't give me a clear view on what it's going to, but I believe it goes to fellow fighter cards. Um, However, that is just great stats for that. That can, that can be run offensively or defensively. It's just great all around. As for the Philip J. Fry card for the combo, you get Underwear Karate, which again, great stats. It has boost and cripple all. Cripple all is just an amazing skill to have in general because offensively, you'll be minimizing damage you will be taking. And then defensively, you're going to be cutting your opponent's attack, so they're not going to be able to cut through your cards as well. And then finally, we have Bender to make the Gender Bender. Gender Bender has Wall, Recover, and then it has Cheer. I believe the Cheer for that one goes to Futurama cards only for the Gender Bender, which kind of is a downside to um, running it in a fighter deck to get that extra boost. However, the 18 Wall is still great. Now, the one thing to keep in mind for this card in particular, Diamond Crusher, is it'll not only be good as a good utility card for fighter but it is a phenomenal card to add to your inventory to make a futurama siege deck because it combos with three of the characters here you combo with leela fry and bender and then the fact that bender's um gender bender cheer goes to futurama cards will just be great for a futurama siege island not to mention diamond crusher in itself is a futurama card so it's already getting the buff for that as well in siege matches so all in all I think Diamond Crusher is probably, if not the best, one of the best cards in this box. The next card we're going to be looking at is the No Mercy Dojo item card in this box. And this card is a great defense card to have in your Rumble defense deck. While it only has 9 base attack, the 54 base HP that it has is great. What that translates to with the current fighter buff from the BGE is 3 punch each turn and 11 heal to it each turn. On top of that, it has the 7 payback for the skill there, which is a great skill to have in a defense deck because you're going to be causing extra damage to your opponent's cards. The cheer all 4 to all other friendly fighter cards is also great to do more damage to your opponents, and the 4 crazed isn't bad either. Now let's take a look at some of its combos. All right, so you might notice for this card that the combo pool of the characters that it goes with is very similar to the last card. They go with a lot of the same characters, but it makes a couple different combos. So let's get into it. First up is the Peter combo with No Mercy Jojo. It gives you the Roundhouse, which gives you Punch and Jab. This is a great card to run offensively to break through your opponent's defenses. With the Mythic Stand, you're going to get Guns Beat Karate, which has Boost, Punch, and Bomb. This is a card that's also great to run offensively, and it can be run defensively too. Roger will give you Sensei Ryan again, which again can be run offensively or defensively based on those skills. With the Luis, it'll give you Hawk and Chick. That combo has Motivate and Boost, which makes it a great card to run both offensively and defensively. With the Mythic Bob, it'll give you the 430 Appointment combo. This card is more of a defensive combo than offensive. It can be run offensively, but with the cripple all and gas damage that you'll be doing, it's more suited in a defense deck to cause your opponent some headaches. It'll also go with Tina to give you the sexy dance fighting again, which again can be good to run in an offensive deck. Though the skills on the combo there are good defensively, I would not risk running a Tina in a defense deck because of her low HP. 
The combo this one will make with Bobby is Groin Kicker with the 19 punch and jab makes it a great card to run offensively to bust through your opponent's up defenses. With Leela, it'll give you Will of a Housewife, which has Punch and Craze, which is a great card to run offensively. If you can get that combo off, not only will you be doing massive damage, but your Leela's attack, your Housewife's attack there, is going to get out of control real quick. For your Philip J. Fry, you'll get another Underwear Karate, which again is another great card to run defensively. And Bender will give you Karate Bender, which has Wall and Motivate, which makes it a great card to run defensively in a defense deck. Next up's going to be the Kaporia card. This card is strictly an offense card. It has a pretty good attack stat of 11. However, it has a very low health stat of 41. 41 is very low to be running in a defense deck, in my opinion, as it can be one-shotted pretty easily in Rumbles. Skill-wise, it's running Recover, Shield, and Cheer, which are, they're all right. They're nothing to brag home about. What's really going to sell this card is its combo potential. So let's go ahead and take a look at what combos this card makes. So again, this card combos with a lot of the same characters as the previous two. First up is Peter for the Roadhouse again. For Roger, once again, you're going to get Sensei Ryan. Luis is going to give you Hawk and Chick again. Mythic Bob will once again give you the 430 appointment combo. Tina will give you the sexy dance fighting. Bobby once again gives you the groin kicker. Leela's the one that's going to give you the newer combo here. I shouldn't say newer. This is an old combo. However, it's one we haven't seen yet in this uh, opening. So the this one is perfectly symmetrical. This combo gives you 25 heal and 25 punch. This is a great combo to run offensively to keep your your character's health up for a better rumble score, as well as defensively, because that punch is some scary punch. And then the remaining combos are going to be the same for Fry and Bender, for Underwear Karate and the Gender Bender. However, this card has the added combo of going with Dr. Amy Wong to give you Wrestler Amy, which is not a bad combo in and of itself defensively, because it has eight, it has the cripple there for 18, and it has Recover. So that is a pretty good card to run defensively. One note I want to make about this card in its favor is that it goes great for Bob's Burger Siege Island because it goes with Tina, Mythic Bob, and Luis. It goes with three different Bob's Burger cards to run on a Bob's Burger Siege Island, and it in itself is a Bob's Burgers card. So it is a great card to include in a Bob's Burger Siege deck. Next up, we'll be looking at the two legendary characters that come in this box, Philip J. Fry and Peter. Both of these cards are great cards that just have in general to have multiple copies of because they go so well in so many different types of decks. I mean, Peter has drunk the drunk um, trait built into him already. He has eight wall, four cheer all to family guy, and seven bombs. So Peter's just great to load up on if you want to build a family guy deck. Fry... In and, in and of himself, is also just a great card. Maxed out, you have 18 attack, 38 health. He's more of an attacker than a defender, but he makes all the good combos. Robot Fry, Super Dance Squad. And then one thing to, that's really good about this box is both of these characters combo with all of the legendary items that come in this box. It's not one of those boxes where they'll combo with one of the items and then you have to figure out some other stuff. They combo with all of it. So it's just a great box to dip into for that reason alone on that. The next card we're going to be looking at is going to be the first epic power combo card, Zoidberg versus Bot. Now, even though this card is an epic card, maxed out, it's actually runnable in a defensive deck. It has 12 attack base and 51 health. With the actual buff from the Battleground effect, that also gets 4 punch and gets healed for 10 each turn. On top of that, the 9 payback is great defensively to cause extra damage. And then the 10 gas as well is just very annoying to deal with. The 3 cripple all, while not a lot of cripple, is also just really annoying to have to fight. So all in all, Zoidberg versus Bot is a pretty decent card to be running defensively as like a power combo if you don't have any other good options. And the last power combo card in this box, the Taibo Luan. Honestly, this card just kind of sucks. Well, yes, it does have a nice 15 um, base attack, which is really, really strong. 
It's 40 health is just abysmal. That will be one-shotted by quite a few things. Yes, it does have a seven bodyguard, which will block some punch, but any really good, strong combo from any of the top guilds and top players can easily crush through this thing. You can't really run it defensively, and even offensively, you'll maybe get one, maybe two hits in from it before it dies, even when it gets its, um, its heals in from the BGE effect. I just don't like this card. Honestly, I think it's better served just recycling it for the Watts. As for the rest of the box, guys, all these epic item cards, just do yourself a favor and recycle them for the Watts. If you're truly trying to build up your deck and get a deck capable of competing with the top players in this game, you really don't need any of these cards. Like, if you're pulling from this box, your goal should be to pull for only just these legendary cards. All of those blue epics at the end here, any of these ideally should just be recycled for the Watts to help improve your legendary cards. And that's going to complete my review of the Christmas Crusher box. If you guys liked the video, please go ahead and click the like button. And if you want to see more content from Animation Throwdown, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Also, feel free to leave a comment in the comments section letting me know what your thoughts are on the box. Do you agree with my assessment of it? Or was there anything maybe that I forgot to go over or that I missed out on? Go ahead and let me know. Alright guys, thanks again for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace.